Okay, now I'm going to start to move into some films that I did like. Oh, jeez, yeah. thanks. Thank um, goodness. To, I would, you know what? I'm still going to give two thumbs up to Enchanted because I did like it. Even though there were some things, again, I would have done better and I would have done differently. It, it is an enchanting movie. And most of the people... Do boys talked, like it? You know, I haven't talked to any boys that have seen it. But I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't. I don't think boys have seen it. Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't because it was cute and funny. Were any boys Although, in the theater when you went? Yeah, there was a lot of families because it was free. It was free pass. Oh, free pass to take everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay, on to the next. Um, that was rated PG, by the way. Um, Enchanted's rated PG. It was really cute, and funny. but again, some things were lacking. American Gangster is the next movie I'm going to review. Directed by 70-year-old British director Ridley Scott. You'll know him most from probably Black Hawk Down and his sci-fi, uh, the creme de la creme of sci-fi films, Blade Runner. This film tells the true story of Frank Lucas, played with just the right mix of charm and menace by the always, always Oscar-worthy Denzel Washington and his groundbreaking takeover of the Harlem drug trade during the Vietnam War. Frank Lucas has been schooled by the very best. Once the driver and right-hand man of the previous Harlem drug lord, after his demise, Frank ingeniously decides to cut out the middleman and deals directly with his Vietnamese suppliers in getting his heroin. Blue Magic is cheap, potent, brand name Frank Lucas heroin, and Frank takes his extended family along for this ride to the high life, each providing a front for laundering his money. But Lucas isn't the only one getting rich off drug money. It appears at least as it is presented in the film, and this is based supposedly on a really true story, that a good chunk of the local police department is getting in on the action, garnering protection money to keep Frank's game afloat. Most notoriously is Detective Trupo, played Serpico Cool by Josh Brolin, who's the son of James Brolin. And he's also, I'm going to talk about him in another movie I'm going to review. Uh, Detective Trupo is a thorn in Lucas's side, and the scenes between the two of them are the best in the film. And there is plenty of money to go around. The only cop not taking graft is Detective Richie Roberts, played low-key and hangdog by the always great, again, Russell Crowe. Richie gathers a few like-minded colleagues, and believe me, there are very few to gather, and spends his time trying to nail Frank. The film is not as violent as I expected. I expected a real shoot 'em up bloody, bloody mess of a film. And although there are certainly a good number of quick, violent actions in the film, it is not. Um, I guess I was kind of expecting an almost, um, you know, the movie with that. Uh, <laughs> you know, fly little pelicans, fly, you know, <laughs> Al Pacino. What movie am I talking about? The drug one with Al Pacino in Miami and he's Cuban. Oh, Scarface. I was oh. expecting Oh, they had a little something. violence in that one. <laughs> I think I was expecting something a little more. They had to rebuild that mansion after that scene. Face. And it is nothing at all like that. Oh, There's a lot fortunate. of great dialogue, a lot of great um, family dynamics in this film. And Ruby Dee plays um, Denzel's mom, and she is heartbreaking, heartbreaking her scenes with Denzel. Um, anyway, this film is not as violent as I expected, although there are certainly a good number of quick violent actions in the film. A film with both Washington and, and Russell Crowe is something to be treasured, and I only wish that you didn't have to wait till the last few minutes of the movie for the two to share a scene. It's a great character study in what makes people who they are, what forces shape the actions people take, and what lengths people are willing to go to for what they believe in, whether it's good or bad. I believe Denzel will definitely be nominated for Best Actor, and I can highly recommend it. It's rated R, two thumbs up. Um, rated R for, again, just some quick scenes of violence and quick, language. It's and only it's quick violence. About... You don't know what's coming, so you don't have to worry about it. And it's, it's over once. It is. Once you realize it's, it's there, you can't turn the TV up because it's over. No, it's not the film that I was expecting, and it actually turns out to be a lot better. And it had some good actors who Incredible. performed. Well, now There's the other movie had good actors, yeah. but they performed poorly. Right. It, they you were, just they never know what you can. Life is like a box of chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, he's, he's in a new movie coming out pretty soon. Charlie Wilson's War. That looks pretty good. So I will definitely highly recommend American Gangs. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. All right. And as I said, Josh Brolin. I got to check the time here. We won't be able to get through my favorite okay. movie. How much time? We have plenty Ten of minutes. Oh, plenty. Oh, well, plenty, folks. Plenty. Stay. All right. Stay so with us. I'm going to go right into another drug movie, No Country for Old Men, directed by the incredible brother duo, Ethan and Joel Cohen. This film is based on the novel of the same name by Cormac McCarthy. And if you've ever read any of Cormac McCarthy's novels, for the most part, they take place in the Texas, Texas 
Mexico border. Uh, they often deal with very real life, real gritty situations, and this is no exception. I, I, did, I did read this book, and the film is very true to it. The few changes that the Coens make, I think, actually improve the story, which is very rare. And probably the most recent book I've read by him is called The Road, which is post-apocalyptic America, a father and son making their way across a uh, desolate dust strewn America. Ooh, I can, I can highly recommend that. That, but that not review will come from, up in the future. Not, yeah, I do see that being turned into a film. Anyway, Llewellyn Moss is a welder out for a day of hunting when he comes across a, dug, a drug deal gone very, very wrong. In a split second, he makes a decision that will change his life and the lives of those closest to him. In a moment of compassion, he returns to the scene of the crime, and from here on out, the film follows his run from those who want their property back. Llewellyn is played by Josh Brolin. <laughs> He's, again, James's son. And probably the cutest thing I've ever seen him in is a movie called Flirting with Disaster. It's got to be about 10 years old. And he's in it with, um, uh, oh man, I'm really losing it. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller's trying to find, he's, in, he's adopted, he's trying to find his parents. And uh, he's in that. That's another really cute movie you should see sometime. Flirting with Disaster. And of course, as I said, he was just an American gangster. So he's got two movies this out right now. No they Country deal with, for Old no Men. No Country for Old Men. All right. Llewellyn is played by Josh Brolin, James's son, and he just fits the role to a T. He looks most comfortable ambling around with a shotgun by his side hunting. He does not look like he was made to run from the psychopathic killer, Shigura, who is played by, Me uh, he's actually a Spanish um, actor, Javier Bardem. He's in Love in the Time of Cholera right now, by, um, based on the book by Gabriel Marcia Marquez, and I haven't had a chance to see it in the movie theaters, but I will definitely see it on video as soon as that comes out. And he's been sent to hunt Llewellyn Moss down. And that is what this film is. It is a hunt. Tommy is it Lee Jones. Oh my. It, it, you're just on the edge of your seat the whole time. Tommy Lee Jones plays Sheriff Bell. Um, and it's his rumination. Tommy Lee Jones again. Tommy Lee he's Jones. In, he's in. so good. Uh, he plays Sheriff Bell, and it is his ruminations on how life as a lawman have changed over his long career that frame the story. It is his voice that we hear talking through most of the film. It is a film that never slows down for a minute, and there is not a bad performance by anyone. Most notably, as supporting cast, we've got Garrett Dillahunt. That might not be a name you're familiar with, but he was in Deadwood, another great show that was a Showtime original. Showtime or HBO original production. It um, was only on for three seasons. You can get all three on DVD. I highly recommend that. Ninety nine, ninety five. No, it won't be that much. It was only three seasons. Probably like forty bucks. Um, best forty bucks you ever spent. He plays the uh, deputy sheriff Wendell, and he lends just a touch of down home home humor to a bloody mess. And Scottish actress Kelly MacDonald, as Llewellyn's wife, Carla Jean, is just the right mix of sweetness and realism. Her husband comes home, he's got this satchel. What you got in the bag, Llewellyn? You know, don't ask any uh, questions, pack your honey. Bag, don't worry about it. Don't pack your bag. Go for a ride. A long and, um, ride. Woody Harrelson, you know, uh, Woody from Cheers, um, has an all too brief role as someone who offers some help to Llewellyn, and he's great too. Not a bad performance in the film. Uh, and the Coen's right, who dies? Uh, I'm not going to do that, of course. Uh, although I'll tell you, you know, it there's going to be a lot of death in this oh, one. And is, it viol is it quick violence? <laughs> it's brutal violence. Are they so. little tiny droplets of blood like in 300? <laughs> oh, no. Javier Bad, uh, Badham, who plays um, Shigur, the guy who's been sent to... Shigur. Shigur. Is it a Shigur or it's, a Shigur? He's a Shigur. He's a Shigur. Let me tell you, he's nothing sweet about this man. He carries around this... Um, a uh, tube of compressed, I guess it's compressed air. I guess it's something that they used to kill cattle with, mercifully. You, you oh. put it on a cattle's head and it, oh. it shoots in and, you know, scrambles the brain. <laughs> well, he uses not that. violent to, at all. <laughs> he uses that, you know, to break down doors to get at people, and he also uses it to kill people. And man, he is just awesome in this role. He is another one, I think. And, and you know, here's what you say is he a major character in the movie? Will he be up for a an Academy Award for a supporting role, for a lead role? You know, he'll probably be nominated for a supporting role, although it is his character that really makes the movie. He now, is a character. I don't know if you know about the Coens, but they are incredible. Um, probably some of my favorite movies, um, Raising Arizona, which was very funny with Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter, who was married to one of the Coens, I don't know which one. And Frances McDormand from Fargo is married to the other brother, so not only are they incredible, they've been wise to marry women who are incredible actresses. 
and uh, oh brother, where are you? You're gonna hurry. We're gonna okay, miss the golden okay. compass. The Combs are known for infusing the most disturbing, dangerous situations with just a bit of humor, making it all all right. And there is no better mix of humor and menace than what you find in Shigura. Bobbed black hair falling across his forehead, carrying an unusual tool of ultimate destruction at his side. Shigura is a man on a mission, and nothing, not bullet holes or open fractures, are going to slow him down. The film seems much shorter than its two hours, and the Cones have proven that they are the masters of mixing gruesome, realistic violence with just enough humor to make it all palatable. Rated R, wonderful, highly recommended. Let me quickly go into the Golden Compass. Now, two thumbs relax, up. Relax, relax now. All right. Two thumbs yeah. up for No Country for Old Men. Two thumbs up also for The Golden Compass. All right. The Golden Compass is rated PG-13. It is based on the first novel in the Dark Materials trilogy by British author Philip Pullman, the Golden Compass was directed by 42-year-old New Yorker Chris Weitz, and he did about a boy and one of my favorite teen um, sex romps of all time, American Pie. You the, think? Yeah, oh yeah. The film tells the story of Lyra Balakwa, an orphan being raised in a university setting. She's curious, and it is her curiosity that leads her down the path of no return, out of her sheltered university life and into a cold, wild world filled with warrior polar bears, Egyptians which really are gypsies, and a magisterium who is trying to rule not only this world, but all worlds beyond as well. The film stars an impressive cast. Nicole Kidman is stunning and stylish as the liberated adventurer, Mrs. Coulter. Kidman is white hot and ice cold all at the same time, dressed in head to toe, matching white dresses and suits, lustily eyeing the scholar who will decide Lyra's fate, whether or not she'll be released into Mrs. Coulter's care um, and coldly scolding Lyra for disobeying her, stating, why get into an argument you will just lose anyway? Daniel Craig, who you'll know as James Bond, the new James Bond from Casino Royale, plays Lyra's uncle, Lord Asriel, and the only bad thing I can say about this is he's only in it for very few scenes, and I can't wait. But he might be in some future. He, that's the thing. He's another adventurer trying to bring down the overpowering and true truth squashing magisterium so you've got um, Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig on opposite sides of this battle. A lot has been made about the potentially anti-Catholic leanings of both the books by Pullman and the film and I did read the first book and I would say they definitely downplayed the aspects of the book and went so far as to even change the ending into a little bit happier than what actually happens in the book. But you know what usually I balk at things like that I'd have to say it works fairly well in this story. Um, this is really setting you up for movies that are to come. You meet people, you get a quick glance at them, and you see that this is going to be, um, she gets what's called the golden compass is given to her by the scholar um, who sets her free, kind of, I don't want to say sets her free. She was apparently placed in the care of the, the college because she's an orphan is she? You'll find out the true story of her parentage in the first movie, which is kind of nice. It's not Star wars in it, and we have to wait till much later. But she gets a golden compass, and it really is what's it's called an altheometer, and it's a truth teller. It helps you yeah, know and tell called? the truth. An alt altheometer. <laughs> is that a made-up word? <laughs> yes. But it's beautiful to look at, and through time, in time, she learns how to read this. And apparently, there were six of these instruments at one time. There's only one left, and only one person there can divine what is being said by it, and it is her. So all these people that are out there, there's witches, there's, like I said, polar bears. Is that a portal, the compass? No, it doesn't seem to be, but what it does is it seems to allow her, she can see all the future. world. It's not necessarily the future. With this, she can divine truth, she can find the way to things that she needs to find. So it's an interesting little device. Uh, the effects are breathtaking, and this story could only have been told now, with computer-generated graphics, so incredible at this time. The polar bears look so real. And one thing that I really loved, each character has um, what's called a demon beside them. And it's not a bad thing. It's um, an animal that is supposedly the... Um, uh, is it kind of like a Webkin's? <laughs> uh, no. It's the vessel that holds your soul, apparently. Oh. Uh, when you die, your demon dies. But it's kind of cool. When you're a child, your demon can take all different forms. It's a bird, it's a cat, it's um, a ferret, it's all these different things. So everyone's walking become, around with one of these Everyone has one of these. And when you become an adult, your Egyptian, your, um, excuse me, your uh, demon has to settle on a certain form. But it's kind of cool to see them. And, and again, they are computer generated, and they are so cool. I want one myself. The effects are breathtaking. They might have them for sale next Christmas <laughs> yeah. by a demon. The effects are breathtaking. The story moves along quickly. And what we are really seeing here 
is the stepping stone to the next two films, which I'm already looking forward to. Everybody in it was great. Um, I, the young girl who plays Lyra Belacqua is um, Dakota, Dakota Blue Richards, I think is her name. Dakota Blue Richards. She's a, um, a girl who grew up in Brighton. This is, a, Dak this is um, Dakota Blue. Dakota Blue Richards. She's 13, never acted before, loved the novels. And when there was an open casting call in London, apparently 10,000 young girls showed up for it, and she was selected. And she is great. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. See, and she, she is great. Me. She is great. Um, if I have you second, are great. If I, Folks. If I have a second, just don't. Well, I don't know. i got to well, check the time right. again. Because... Ooh, we are right there. Oh, good. So. New out on DVD, Harry Potter. We're going to cancel the rest of the talk of the time because we're just going to go to a movie review for an hour. Well, I always have a lot to say. Um, new on DVD, Does just Tom in time get a for word Christmas. In? Yeah, he talks a lot of them. I don't talk that much. Of them. You know that. I don't know that. No, I don't know that. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is out. Um, Born Ultimatum. And the nice thing about Born Ultimatum is you can get all three movies packaged together if you'd like. Born Identity, Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum, which I reviewed not all that is long ago. Is there going to be ago. another one? I don't think so, and I hope not. I really think that's oh, the I end liked of it. it. I know, but that's the end of it. Um, I did see Super Bad on DVD, and that was... Super Bad? Super Bad, yeah. No. Super Bad, Super Bad, If you want to see a good you know, teen comedy, Revenge of the Nerds will always hold a soft spot in my heart, and American Pie. Those are two that are a thousand times better. I don't know why this garnered such rave reviews. Um, I just didn't like it. Didn't like it all that much. And I talked to a few other people that agreed with me, so I'm not alone in that. Christmas, my favorite Christmas ones that I'll be watching. Christmas Vacation, can't go wrong with Chevy Chase. A Christmas Story, of course, with little Ralphie. Miracle on 34th Street. Love my it. mother's favorite movie. Yeah. Jingle All the Way, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Sinbad, and of course, It's a Wonderful we Life. We watched It's a Wonderful Life. I had Morgan watch it. Now, did you did you have, watch it on DVD, or did you have a I have an old film? VHS no. tape. Black and white. No, no well, there's, please don't ever see anything but black and white. Oh, but um, there is a new anniversary DVD out of It's a Wonderful Life. So it's been digitally remastered and repaired. So if you're like... Did they make Brian, another movie yeah. based on the same Oh, there's story? many, many movies, I think, uh, that have that story as, uh, as the a theme. theme. Yeah, definitely. But right now, you want to buy It's a Wonderful Life digitally remastered. No man is a failure who has friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that, that's a great, great movie. So yeah, hopefully we're going to see that. And have a nice, nice Christmas, nice Hanukkah. Well, cool they they might holidays. be watching this after Happy that. Happy New Year. <laughs> Hello, January. <laughs> Whenever you see yeah. this show. Well, oh, what am I going to see for next time? I'm going to see I Am Legend. I'll see that. You are a legend. Friday. In mm -hmm. your own mind. Uh, Juno is an Indian She missed it. Did she just ignore <laughs> that? <laughs> what else is coming up? Well, I'm probably not having more time. Right. Say to goodbye to all right. the nice people at home. Bye, nice people at home. <laughs> we might renew our contract for 2008. We're in negotiations oh, yeah. right now. Uh, uh, send in your um, your requests, and maybe we'll uh, read some of your comments and requests. Mm. Just write to Talk of the it? Town, Milton, Mass. The post office knows how to get it. Thank you, folks. Bye. We'll see you next year. Bye-bye.